Vail stock is down 52% since hitting its high in late 2021. And there are a lot of things going on with this company. There's obviously been warmer climate in a lot of the areas that the company has t traditionally operated in. Colorado, in the western parts of the United States, they also have properties in the Midwest. Haven't gotten a lot of snow in recent years. That has really hampered the company's winter business. But financials have not really been destroyed from a revenue perspective, and the company is still relatively profitable. Now, in, in, now in the interest of doing more research, I actually visited a couple of Vail Resorts properties recently. One of the things that I was looking for is what are they doing to generate revenue during that summer season? You have obviously the winter season that has always been their bread and butter. This is where they have unmatched assets throughout the world. I don't think there's anybody that's going to be able to compete with them when it comes to winter. But as the winter season potentially gets shorter, the amount of sh snow that falls gets lower, your revenue opportunities in winter, winter start to diminish. And so what are you going to do to generate revenue from April through October or November? And there are more and more options. It actually ties into the company's Epic Pass. Now, I go back to the Colorado Pass before Vail that was just a handful of mountains in Colorado. That was in the very, very early 2000s. But it's a really a very similar concept with the Epic Pass. But this is now more of a year-long pass. You can get access to lift tickets today by having an Epic Pass. You can get discounts on food. You can get discounts on lodging. All kinds of different ways. This has become much more of a membership business model. The Epic Pass isn't just about getting access to lift tickets. That's what it was back in the 2000s. But now it's really much more of your ticket to the entire Vail Resort ecosystem. And even if you make just a single trip to a Vail Resort's property in a year, it may make sense to get an Epic Pass. So I want to go through the way that I'm thinking about Vail Resorts as an investment not a company that I'm buying quite yet, but the stock is down 52%. So the risk reward profile is getting a little bit more attractive. Like I said, they have some of the best assets in the world. So when you talk about a moat around the business, it's hard to find a business. There's not really going to be a way to disrupt something like Vail Resorts. It's just going to be a matter of, are they going to be able to make enough money, enough return on their assets to be able to justify the valuation that they have today? And that's fundamentally the question, but I want to go through what the strategy looks like first. My name is Travis William. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. If you go to fool.com slash ASYM, they'll give you their top 10 stocks to buy right now. So I want to cover the Epic Pass first. So if you're not familiar, this is the Epic Pass. There are three different versions of, of the Epic Pass. There's a four-day pass, a local pass. This gives you access to some of the properties with some restrictions. And then there's the unlimited all-resort access pass. So let's go to this middle pass, $746. That sounds very expensive. But when you start to look at a non-refundable pass, it's $132 per day for skiing or a refundable pass that's almost $300, you can see why I say that it, it makes sense to get an Epic Pass even if you make just a single trip. And the Epic Pass is really about more than just skiing. This is just the Vail Lodging website. So just go to the Vail website, go to Lodging, and you can see here Epic Pass holders get 20% off. That is because Vail itself owns or operates a lot of the properties that are right around the resort. So there's oftentimes big lodging facilities at the base of a lot of the mountains. Those are typically owned by Vail or Breckenridge or, or Whistler. And so they're able to offer these kinds of passes to get 20% off. What they want to do is they want to keep you in the Vail ecosystem. So they want you spending money on a lift ticket and then they want you spending money on their lodging. They even want you eating at the resort. This is just an example of one of the properties at Vail. And you can see that Epic Pass holders get a 20% discount. So these things are still very, very expensive to eat at the mountain, but 20% off is pretty sizable when you're maybe feeding a family of four or five. That can amount to hundreds of dollars over a multiple day stay. They also continue to add more activities during the summer. So you can see that there's a scenic gondola, there is like this mini roller coaster. They have one of these at Vail. There's these at other properties as well. There are events happening, obviously hiking, fly fishing, golfing, biking. These are all things that you can do on the mountain. And it's relatively busy. It's not nearly as busy as it is during the typical ski season, but the resorts that we visited did have a fair number of people. And for some of these all day passes, 
especially for kids, you're talking about about $100 to get access. So it's going to be very similar to getting access to lift tickets. Now, these adventure parks, you can get discounts through something like the Epic Pass, but it's not going to be included in the Epic Pass. Like riding a lift ticket might be or riding a gondola might be. So I think it's an interesting, interesting way to think about the business model. This is becoming much more of a membership style business model where they want to get you in the door with a membership. They offer you a whole bunch of discounts and then that keeps you lodging there. It keeps you skiing there. It keeps you doing a summer vacation there, even eating there. And that's fundamentally what's going to drive their revenue long term. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. So what do those numbers look like? And this is really where I kind of shy away from something like Vail Resort stock because it's just not growing in the way that it once was and it's not nearly as profitable. So you can see from this chart, the company's revenue has really flatlined over the last year or so, but it was up really nicely over the past decade. Remember, that does include the acquisition or merger with Whistler Blackcomb. So that has built it into the huge ecosystem that it is today. But this is where you get to some of the more concerning numbers. This is a look at the company's return on invested capital that is in gray, and then blue is return on assets. So just a single digit return on assets, that's pretty low for a business like this. And you can see that there was a nice trend there during the mid 2000s, but then you get to the pandemic and even post pandemic, just not the same returns that it, was, it once was. There's also a pretty significant amount of debt on the balance sheet, $2.4 billion worth of debt. That has come down over the last few years, but still pretty sizable for a company with just a $6.7 billion market cap. So that puts you at a enterprise value of about $9.3 billion. So these multiples start to look pretty high. Price earnings multiple is about 25 as I'm recording today on a forward looking basis. So that's based on analyst estimates. Price earnings multiple is 21. That's okay, but it's not real cheap for a company that may be facing headwinds just from simply changes in the weather. And for enterprise value to EBITDA is about 11. Again, a reasonable multiple but if you had tailwinds behind the business, but not a business that I think you have a ton of tailwinds behind. So the stock falling 52% has really made this a much more attractive risk reward for Vail Resorts, but just isn't quite at the point where I think it's a no-brainer yet. Those really low return on asset numbers, the re low return on invested capital, these are fundamental headwinds that I think the company is going to be chain facing for quite a while in the future. Now, the strategy to move to the Epic Pass to try to get to people to try to get people to come back, not just in the winter, but also in the summer is I think the right one. You want to have people visiting your resorts more and more. Keep them in that ecosystem. Keep keep them staying at your lodgings. Keep them eating at your facilities. But there's limitations if your ski season is simply getting shorter if there's not as much snow on the ground. And that's actually what we have seen over the past decade or two. And so that may be a challenge. It's going to just be a headwind for Vail Resorts for the foreseeable future. And I also question how far you can push prices. It's always been very expensive to go skiing, but now you're talking about having to drop five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 to go for a ski trip with a family of four or five people. That is a ton of money to be going skiing and could limit the number of people that you're going to get bring into the ecosystem, even trying skiing for the first time. You want to have that access point for younger skiers. So like I said, interested in the strategy at Vail Resorts, and we saw that played out. The Epic Pass was a very important thing to have for a lot of people at some of these Vail properties, but it isn't driving fundamental revenue growth or increased profitability for the company. And that's what's going to keep me out of the stock. But one to look at if the stock continues to fall because there is a big moat around the business. These are just properties that you're not going to get anywhere else in the world. And Vail has access to them. So let me know what you think about Vail Resorts and the stock. Leave your comments in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next time.